Thank you for joining us today on our how-to video. We're gonna be going specifically over what to do when the retention point around the mag release of your holster is molded too tight, either because you have an aftermarket mag release or it was just molded too tight prior to shipment. Either way, this is a very easy fix that you can either do yourself or you can ship it back to us in a couple minutes, we can do it and then return it to you. Either way, uh, it's relatively easy and we're gonna kind of show you how to do that. Obviously, as with anything, when you do after, uh, after market modifications that we do not do ourselves, it can void warranties and things like that. Um, and we have had customers uh, apply too much heat in the wrong spaces and mess up their holsters to the point that they had to get a new one. So obviously you assume risk when you are doing this, uh, but if you follow some of our tips, most likely you can do this yourself. So uh, first off, you'll obviously need the holster with a retention point that needs to be loosened. Uh, you'll need some sort of flat, flat object. I'm using like a Technics or hobby craft, you can get these at Lowe's, little plate. You just need something uh, thin and flat and preferably something that can take heat or temperature. Uh, you can use a knife blade, for instance. There's lots of different things that you could use for this. But essentially, uh, this is gonna be used for is once you've heated the plastic around the mag release area, you're gonna slide this up underneath between the mag release itself and the plastic. And you're gonna kind of use this edge essentially to form, to lift the plastic away from the mag release and create space and distance between the mag release and the plastic itself, while also kind of creating a sharper edge lift and shelf with this flat object. As it cools, it'll harden in that position and shape, giving that standoff you're looking for. So, only tools you're gonna need, like I said, is this metal plate as well as either a hair dryer or a heat gun like this one. Uh, something to note, if you're using a heat gun, there's lots of different ones on the market. You know, they're anywhere from 10 to $100, depending on what you need. They'll all work the same. The only difference is the temperature they put out, essentially. Um, this one puts out a little over 1,000 degrees, which obviously, with something so hot, it's very easy to scorch the material. It's very easy to make it shiny uh, or over shiny and or... Uh, it's easy to make the material brittle because you've overheated it and cooled it multiple times. So there's a lot of, a lot of damage you can do uh, to your holster doing this yourself. But for those that want the information, uh, this is the way to do it. So uh, always make sure that when you use the heat gun, you're blowing the majority of the heat away from the holster. So in this case, I would quite literally use the heat gun and the airflow would essentially blow over just the edge of where the mag release is gonna be uh, adjusted away from the holster itself, out away from the gun. And so I'm not heating up any area of the holster that I don't want to. And that's very important because you can be so focused on getting the plastic around the mag release to loosen up that you forget and you overheat these areas over here and you've completely ruined the retention on your holster. So. Airflow, the direction of airflow is very, very, very important. Um, can I say that again? It's very, very, very important uh, when you're making this adjustment. So as simple as that, let's go ahead and do it. Uh, make sure that when you're heating, again, airflow is going away from uh, the holster itself toward the outside. Um, also make sure that you're not putting the heat gun too close to the plastic because you can actually scorch because of the heat of the gun and constant temperature. You can actually scorch the plastic itself and turn it literally brown or black if you keep it on too long. Um, it's also good to note that you essentially want to just make small little passes over the area as you're blowing the air away from the center of the holster. These little passes will keep the temperature more or less regulated rather than concentrating uh, too much temperature on one piece of the plastic. So you're just gonna make short little passes, you know, take the heat gun off, Make sure see if it's pliable, uh, you know, see if it's flexible, put a little more heat on it, see if it's flexible. It's much better to put a little heat on here and there and keep testing it than to leave it on and leave it on too long and to, to scorch and overheat 
the plastic. So this is something that should definitely be approached slowly and meticulously um, at first rather than just kind of going on, putting on a ton of heat and trying to do this in one step. Um, once you've had more time doing this type of thing, obviously with more experience, you can do it quickly. Um, however, at first, please, please, please uh, approach this process with caution. So let's, without further ado, let's go ahead and get this started. So I guess it'd be good, obviously, uh, to plug in the heat gun. Um, maybe that should have been the first how-to video, how to plug in a heat gun. So let's get started. You can start to see it's starting to get flexible, and with it being that flexible, that's a perfect time to go ahead and slide this in, slide it to the edge that you want to create, and bend it over. You can kind of see, I'm trying to move my fingers so you can see what's going on. You can kind of see that, you know, again, you're creating the edge with the metal, and then you're just holding it down as it cools. You can use a wet rag to make it cool faster. You can <laughs> blow on it if you'd like, like you're cooling your kid's food. Um, but we keep doing this again, creating our space and tension. You know, I found a lot of times when you reheat this area, you know, if you were to scorch a little bit this edge, you can just rebuff it out. And uh, you can do that with a Dremel tool or whatever. Just rebuff it out and it'll make it look like new. So now that I've done that, now that it's cooled, you can actually see, try to get the right camera view here. You can actually see the gap that it created by doing that. So this is, again, this is a very simple process. Uh, depending on how much standoff you wanna have, you know, you just do and repeat this process. So that's it, that's how to relieve the tension around the magazine release. Uh, if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to us. God bless you guys. Have a